can put a thousand to flight and two of us can set the legions fleeing. Just one of us can put a thousand to flight and two of us can
Good evening, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. My name is Vincent and I come from the parish of Jesus Caritas, Kepong Baru. I'd like to share you with you a very short message today on the season, on the event of Pentecost, friends. I would like to start my sharing first with a verse that I picked from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse 47. Now, verse 47 says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And I would like to draw your attention, friends, from this particular, from the last part of that sentence, until you are clothed with power from on high. Some of your Bibles may read as, until you are endued with power from on high. And I prefer actually that particular word, endued, because it gives me a picture of something that is continually flowing down from up right down into my body and to every, every believer that is. So we are endued and filled with power. And that's exactly what the Feast of Pentecost is all about. Now let's move on to the very words of Jesus that you spoke in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And I shall read from my Bible. It says, But, let me see this. But you shall receive power from on high. When the Holy Spirit comes down upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria. I'd like to point out two things that are very pertinent in that particular verse. You shall receive power from on high. Power is the first one that I would like to draw your attention to. And the second one is the word witnesses. Jesus gave his apostles power, not simply to loll it up, not to enjoy or celebrate it, but they were to go out and be witnesses, my friends. And today that very same call is applicable to each one of us. But as we move into the Feast of Pentecost and as we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, we are to go out as witnesses. Now, just imagine if the apostles were so joyful on Pentecost Sunday that they just gathered together, they had a celebration, they had a prayer meeting, they had praise and worship. You know what would have happened then? Nothing, actually. But the Bible records in the book of Acts chapter 2 that after they were baptized in the Spirit, when the tongues of fire came down upon them, it was Peter, the most prominent member re reported in, the, in chapter 2. Peter went out onto the streets. Now, that was a very remarkable event, friend, because Peter, Peter was an illiterate, uneducated, unqualified fisherman. Peter was the coward who denied Jesus before he was crucified. And Peter wasn't found at the cross when Jesus was crucified. In fact, on, on Easter Sunday morning, it was Peter together with the apostles were all huddled up in a room, so afraid that the Romans would come and arrest them. And this very same Peter, friends, now think about it for a moment. This very same Peter who was baptized in the Holy Spirit, now bold and brazen. He comes out into the streets of Jerusalem and he challenges the Jews. He challenges the people who are living there and he, he, he commands them to listen exactly to what he has to say. If you read the sermon in the book of Acts chapter 2, you would realize that Peter gave a very long discourse of which there are very, very few extracts only recorded. It gives me the picture, friends, that Peter actually was able to tell the whole people the salvation history beginning from the time of Abraham right down to the prophets until the fulfillment that was in Jesus Christ. And how did Peter know all of this? He was not schooled in the Torah. He was not academically qualified. I'll share with you later how it came about. And this particular Peter was so powerful in his, in his uh, witnessing that as we look at the at a verse in chapter 2, verse 30, 37 says, this is the end of Peter's first sermon, friends. And at the end of the sermon, people come up to him and says, 
brother, what must we do to be saved? What must we do to be saved? That gives me a picture, friends, of the people at that time was so disturbed by what they were lacking at that moment. They were so churned inside that they knew they had to do something about the things that were happening inside their spirits. And so they came up to Peter and asked him, what must we do to be saved? Peter simply told them, "Be." he says, uh, let me read the words to you. He says, Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Peter tells us something, friends, that I really want to share with you tonight because it is so relevant to us today. He goes on to say, For the promise to, is to you and to your children. The promise is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, everyone whom the Lord God has called to himself. The promise is to you and your children and to all who are far off. Friends, I believe that the words far off does not mean far off in time, but also far off in distance. And therefore, for every one of you here listening to this particular session tonight, you have been included in that all who have been called far off, friends. So I urge you, friends, now to turn to the Lord and to offer to give up your lives unto the Lord. And you know why you should do this or why we should do this together? Let me just share with you, friends, three things that happened with the apostles as soon as Peter finished his sermon. Number one, friends, Peter was able to deliver that sermon because he had instantaneous revelation from the Holy Spirit. In fact, in one of the passages of his sermon that is recorded here, he actually quoted Joel 2.28. He said, you know, in, in those days, the spirit will, will fall upon my sons and my daughters. And, you know, all of them would receive, and they would, they would have, young men would see visions and old men would dream dreams and they would speak in tongues. Now, Peter never knew that verse. I do not know whether he knew the prophet Joel. Probably he knew Joel, but he probably wasn't familiar with that particular book of Joel. So how did he get that revelation at that instant? None other than the power of the Holy Spirit, friends. And as like, as you can see after that, the apostles just went out. They didn't go back to their homes. They didn't go back to the church, but they immediately went out into all of Jerusalem. And of course, in the coming, in the, in the ensuing days, that they went out into all the parts of Judea and Samaria, all of Israel, and they traveled practically fulfilling the command of Jesus to the ends of the world. So the first result, friends, that you can expect when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit is actually to be able to receive instant revelation. Revelation that you had not known before, but given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's number one. Number two, you would notice that the apostles there, they were so bold and brazen. But the Saturday before Pentecost Sunday, friends, they were all frightened. They were all huddled and shut it up in the upper room. But immediately as the tongues of fire came upon them, and as they went out into the streets of Jerusalem, there was this new courage and boldness. There was this new spirit within them that said that they had to go. They had to go and tell people the gospel of their salvation. So they were so bold and brazen. That's exactly fulfilling what Jesus had told them, that you will receive power and you will be my witnesses, friends. The third thing, friends, that happened to the apostles that day or during that time was that they actually were accompanied by signs and wonders. If you, if you read the book of Acts chap, from chapter 2 onwards, there is not a page, friends, there is not even one page that does not record a miracle. And on one of those pages, it is recorded that Paul worked extraordinary miracles, friends. Extraordinary miracles. That's really a, that's actually a laugh, friends, because miracles were already very, very 
above normal. Now, if the writer of the, of the book of Acts says that there were extraordinary miracles, then there must have been something that was more and more than miraculous. In fact, miracles were the norm for that time when the apostles went out preaching, friends. So please remember these three points that I want to share with you very quickly tonight, friends. This is number one, that Peter had instant revelation. Number two, the apostles were bold and brazen. And number three, signs and wonders accompanied them wherever they preached. I would like to ask you a question as we celebrate Pentecost uh, this time. Do you think, friends, that you are entitled to the same privileges and the blessings that Jesus gave each of the apostles? I would say with a resounding yes, friends. And if you think, friends, that you are not qualified, think about Peter's qualification. If you think, friends, that if you are not worthy, think about Peter's denial. If you think, friends, that you are not equipped, think about the apostles. Most of them were fishermen. Matthew was a tax collector. All the others, with the exception of Luke, were totally academically not qualified at all. So what is there to stop you and I from being in the same, from receiving the same blessings that the apostles received then, friends? Absolutely nothing but our own selves, but our own self-esteem, but our own inferiority complexes. And of course, friends, our own sin. Now this Pentecost, friends, I ask and urge you, friends, not to treat it as another liturgical event on the church calendar. But make this Pentecost different. Different. Make a change in our lives so that we can make differences in the lives of other people. Let us make, let us resolve to commit ourselves, to surrender ourselves that from this time forth, we will endear the Lord with such fervency with a fervent desire to serve Him. Let us commit our lives with such commitment that there's no looking back onto each one of us so that we can actually practice and preach the salvation gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, my brothers and sisters, and have a holy and blessed Pentecost.
and renew a right spirit within me, within all of us. Together as one church, as one voice, there will be a great awakening. Amen.